So that's it, I've done four laps. I've just done a GoPro run with some good spots and then uh, had to get off because I had a bit of an old man issue. But after playing with the suspension and getting this thing sorted, so my initial impressions were it's just a stiff, awkward feeling bike uh, with a big price tag. But getting the forks where I want it to be, which they're exactly where they should be now, they feel excellent, heaps of support. Oh, they, they're really, really good. Uh, if anything, I could probably, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'd change on those forks. I think they're pretty good. I'd just have a bit more of a play, ride it on different terrain to fine tune it. Rear shock. Now, it comes with beginning stroke rebound, ending stroke rebound, and compression. Now, when I got it, the beginning stroke was quite slow, the ending stroke was quite fast, and the compression was all the way off. Ending stroke being fast was making it bucky and and uh, very abrupt and not, not very good on the any sort of bumps, really. Just made it feel really stiff and efficient, but not compliant. And the slow beginning stroke uh, was sapping all of my grip. So... I've slowed the ending stroke down, so the ending stroke is uh, just over halfway towards closed, so it's probably not, it might be two thirds closed, it's two, it's got two full rotations, so one full rotation is halfway, I've gone a little bit further than halfway, so a little bit further than one full rotation on that, just to keep it, uh, keep it coming back at the right time, but slow enough for it to not be beating me up on the deeper impacts I've got one click of compression to steady the bike up which I mentioned in the GoPro run and it definitely worked it definitely steadied that back end same as when you run your forks uh, with no compression versus a few clicks of compression it just steadies it up and it allows it to follow the line that you're asking of it and the beginning stroke rebound I've sped that right up and I've gotten all my grip back there's heaps more grip there now Coming into those steep, steep shoots, I can put the bike where I want it to go. Before, I was really having to tiptoe into them because literally it felt like I had a slick on the back. So that's fixed. This seat, oh my God. I'm literally done for the day because it's a hot day and I'm pretty knackered, but more so because I can't sit on this seat anymore. It's literally just, it's like the seat on the uh, slash that I took. It's just a two bricks so I can't sit on seats like that they're way too stiff for me seat post reverb killer worked well code brakes work really well heaps of modulation there there's definitely more control and modulation or not control but modulation I guess than the Shimano XT four pots that I used the other day but I I think I like the feeling of the Shimano's. I reckon I prefer the feeling of the Shimano's. So I'd have to spend more time on these, but those Shimano's really, really impressed me, blew me away. So tires were good. I'll definitely go back to a 3C Max grip. I think it's just nice to have that little bit softer rubber on the corners for when things do get a bit uh, on edge. The bike overall, still, the way I've set this suspension up now, so it's much more supple, much more compliant it still sails up the hill still climbs really really efficiently really well if anything it's got more grip on the climbs on that loose fire road at the top so that feels really good climbs like a demon i can see why people say this is an ultimate all-rounder climbs really really well and it descends really really well as well so that last run the only thing that really held me up to be honest is the narrower bars the 740s you know, andy's a little bit smaller than me ever so slightly so he prefers the 740. So, and it's good to see people setting their bikes or setting their bars up to the size of their body instead of what, uh, what they saw on pink bike or whatever. If you're not a big guy, you don't need big wide bars. So my, you know, the, the broadness of my shoulders, I've always felt like I'm about 760. I've gone back and forth, 760 is a spot. So I'd go wider bars. The Eagle drivetrain's killer. This Exo drivetrain, it's smooth as butter. I don't know what chain Luby uses, but everything worked really well. 
and uh, yeah this is a very very playful 29er it doesn't the only time I realized it was a 29er was when I thought about it like oh that's right I need to mention something about it uh, as a 29er um, in comparison to what I'm used to and thinking about it, it, like I was having to actually think like, oh, where is it showing these traits that I get from 29ers? And it's really nowhere. It doesn't drag out on the back. It doesn't, it's not hard to bring the back end around. It flicks, changes directions really well. And I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it's a short bike. So it's a medium, which is probably too small for me. One size up, if I, if I was to jump on the Santa Cruz large, I think it kind of almost feels similar to the Trek sizing. So this is smaller than my 18.5 Trek, but it's a tiny bit bigger than the 17.5 Trek. And I think the large is in between a 19.5 and an 18.5, or maybe closer to a 19.5. So a large in this, I'm 174 centimeters, so I'm sure that helps. But yeah, overall, killer bike. I like the coil. Once you get it dialed, you can easily get lost in that, but just remember to keep your rebound active and then work from there. If your rebound's not active, it's probably not doing much for you. And yeah, you're not gonna know how the bike feels. So that's just my preference to set up. I might do a video of uh, suspension setup later, but yeah, Santa Cruz High Tower LT. Left a good taste in my mouth.